All right. Hey guys, we are live for the uh, recording of Be Awesome, Don't Suck. Glad you're here. We'll see. We'll give everybody a few minutes to uh, log on, see if anybody does before we get to get to recording and all that good stuff. So let's take a look here at the Let's see if anybody's going to pop. We'll give it a minute. All right. Well, hey, welcome. Glad, glad you're, glad you're here. And uh, we're going to give it a go again with this live recording um, of the podcast. Be awesome, don't suck. We're talking about missional community this week. Uh, what does that mean? All that good stuff. And uh, um, if anyone's hanging around after, then what we'll do is some Q&A, but feel free to drop questions uh, in the comments and I can hit those after. Then you can go back through and, and check out the video if you want. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, let's, uh, I guess we'll, we will get going here. So hey, it's my boy Dukes. What's happening, man? Um, anyway, all right, uh, on, on to the recording of, uh, missional community, uh, here on Be Awesome, Don't Suck. So Welcome. To be awesome, don't suck. I am your host, Dan Rose. Glad you are with me. Um, and uh, it's it's another edition where we are live recording this on Facebook uh, while we're while I'm setting this up for the the podcast as well. So I just realized that every Thursday you can jump on uh, Facebook Live and follow along, engage in conversation with me. Uh, you can post comments in the live feed. We can talk afterwards uh, via Facebook Live. I hope you will. I hope you'll join me uh, there. But if you're listening to the podcast, glad you're glad you're on the podcast as well. And uh, I hope that you will subscribe, that you will rate, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, so just getting all that out of the way right up front. How about that? Uh, you can also become a patron of the Be Awesome Don't Suck podcast uh, on my Anchor uh, page, which is anchor.fm slash Daniel M. Rose. I hope you'll consider doing that. Uh, any proceeds from that will go to uh, better, you know, updating equipment and doing different things um, to uh, help bring you more stuff uh, here on the podcast and via the, the Facebook live feed. So uh, today, today we're talking about missional community. And um, that's a that's a might be a relatively new phrase for you. It might be a relatively new idea. I know a few years ago uh, this was a new concept for me. Uh, this idea of of what what is a missional community? How does that differ from going to church? All these different kinds of things. What is what is missional community versus regular community? Um, there was a there was a phrase in one of my favorite books by a guy named Alan Hirsch. He talks about uh, communitas, and I think that that's the same similar idea to to a missional community. Um, but to get us going, I, I wanted to. I was thinking through some questions, and here's here's one question: when you when you go to church, what what are your expectations? Simple. When you go to church, what are your expectations? And I think uh, for me. When I think about that question of what are my expectations when I go to church, uh, the two questions that kind of that kind of pop into my head are: Am I coming here to ex with an expectation to serve or an expectation to be served? And for people that go to church, they know kind of the right answer. I mean, the right answer is, "Well, I'm here to serve any way I can," and and all this kind of stuff. Um, but our our experience tends to tell a different story or the way we actually live uh, tends to tell a different story. Uh, many people on Sundays are not walking into church buildings 
uh, looking for opportunities to serve. They are looking to be fed. They're looking to be served. They're looking to have needs met. Uh, many, many of our churches uh, kind of have this um, approach where we're where we're trying to to figure out how can we meet needs. So as we seek to meet needs of people coming into our doors, uh, it's almost like we are turning them into consumers and uh, treating treating them like uh like ups at a at a car dealership or or something and uh and that's that's just the reality of it because so many of us walk into a church building on Sunday and are asking the question how can i be served what how are, what needs of mine are you going to meet and so you know oftentimes when people leave a church what do we hear uh we hear I wasn't being fed. That is one of the the big pushbacks against a, a lot of churches. Um, a lot of reasons why people take off. While a lot of reasons why people might go to a different church is because they're not being fed, as if the church exists to feed uh, to feed them. Well, what are they? That question I used to really buy into, but I have struggled with that more and more and more over the last maybe 10 to 15 years, because what is it, what, what does that look like? What does that even mean? And oftentimes what I find is when people say I'm not being fed, it's because it's because they've been challenged to dig deeper. They've been challenged to go into a depth of faith where, where they're actually being asked to engage God, to engage the scriptures, to engage uh, community in a way that, that they've never been, been asked to do before. And, and they find it to be hard. They find it to be really hard. And when something's hard, people leave. And so if, if our question that we walk into on a Sunday morning, when we walk into a church building is, uh, how can I be served? When it gets hard, we're going to take off. We're going to leave and we're going to say, listen, um, they weren't feeding me. And so, uh, so I think we need to have a, I, I think when we begin to reframe or rethink the way we think about going to a church building on Sunday, um, the, one of the key things we need to do is really wrestle through our expectations, really change the, how, how we're thinking about what it is that we're doing on those Sundays. Um, whether you go to a Sunday morning thing or a Saturday night thing or, or whatever. And, and if we can reframe our expectations, if we can begin to change from how am I going to be served to how can I serve, then what happens is the, the, our approach, our, our engagement within our congregation uh, begins to look differently. We don't we don't show up necessarily uh, seeking to be entertained or, or definitely not uh, trying to get something out of it. Um, we are going and we're trying to give something to it. That's, that's I, I think that's a critical distinction um, when we start wrestling through what our expectations are on uh, when we go to a church building on Sunday. Um, and then the second question that I've been thinking a lot about is why do we even use the language go to church? When we read through the scriptures, uh, church is not, it's not a building. It's not a, it's, it's not, it's not a thing you go to. I, I honestly cannot think of any example in, in the Bible where it talks about going to church in church being ecclesia or ecclesia, right? Uh, this is, this is the word that we translate as church. And, and the reason for that is because it's not a place. Church is a people. Church is, is our identity. For those of us who seek to follow Jesus, church is, is who we are. It's not what we do. It's not where we go. It's not something we buy. It's not something we hang a shingle outside of. Um, it's 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 who it's our it's our very identity. It's it's the very it's the very being 
of, of who we are. We are the church. We are the called out ones. We are the ambassadors. We are the, we are the ones who, who are seeking to model the Jesus life. That's, that's what it means to be church. That's what it means to be the church. And, and so this language of going to church, what it betrays is a car- compartmentalization of our faith. What it betrays is, is this idea that faith is something that we do uh, once a week. Faith is something that we do, um, you know, for, for a couple of hours on the weekend. It's, like, it's almost like faith has become a, a, our golf game, right? Because, I mean, the reality is, is that most people, guys like, guys like me, I, I, don't, I don't practice golf. I, I go out once or twice a year. And that's how many of us begin to treat our faith. When we start thinking about this idea of go to church, it, is, uh, it, it just shows how we have put, put our faith into a box that, that really only is happening uh, every once in a while. It's happening once a week. But if we can begin to change our mindset, if we can begin to think about us being the church, us seeing that as, as our identity and understanding that's who we are, not what we do, then what happens is all the different questions that we begin to ask begin to change. And going back to that first question of expectations, it becomes much easier to change our expectation from uh, how can I be served to how can I serve uh, because because no longer is our faith stuck in a tiny little box that happens in a building on Sunday mornings, but our faith becomes something bigger, richer, broader, something that that we are experiencing and we are living into on an everyday basis. It's something that, that happens Monday, Monday through Sunday instead of just on Sundays, or maybe just on Sundays and Wednesdays, or if you're really holy, maybe Sunday, Wednesday, Friday. I, I, I don't know. Um, but if we... But if we, can, if we can begin to shift this idea of going to church to being the church, then, then that, that paradigm shift in and of itself changes our language. And as we change our language about who we are and what we do, then it, then it explodes this concept of, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so uh, this is why, this is why I, I, I love this this description of coming together as the body of Christ, as missional community, as opposed to church. Um, I, I, like the, I, I like the word congregation um, more than even going to church. Because both congregation and missional community, uh, what they both begin to point to is this bigger picture, that we are, that we are, to, live, that we are to live the Christian life Monday through Sunday, that we're not to compartmentalize it, that we're not to consume it, that it's not just something we do for a few hours a week, but it pervades and invades every aspect of our lives. When, I, when I'm sitting in the, you know, the, the school parking lot picking, picking up kids and, and people are driving like, like fools, <laughs> you, you, know, you, don't get, you try not to get mad maybe, I don't know. But it, begins to, it be, just begins to influence the way you see everything. And so, uh, so nuts and bolts, missional community, uh, I, would, I would argue, is what we want to seek to be. It's, it's a community marked by how it, how it serves the world. It's not a community marked um, by, by, the, by a show or by an experience but how it serves, how it engages everything around it, right? So a missional community is living uh, what, what some would say up in and out, um, but, but it's living it publicly. It's living it in the neighborhood. And that's the key, right? There are a lot of churches that do a great job of, of, of living up, which is connecting with God. There are, Many of those same churches do a great job of, of living in, which is discipling people. And, and you know what? They're even doing a really great job of out of doing outreaches and making, uh, doing some things in a in a way that that is attractive to to people who are far from God. But the thing is, is they're doing it always within a building. They're doing it on their home turf. Uh, I think about 
I think about this in the context of college football. And, uh, you know, Michigan and, and a lot of the other big time football programs, they don't like to travel. I mean, they want to have home games. And, and these home games uh, are important, one, because <laughs> when, when they're home, they get, they get the gate, right? I mean, it's, it's a big money maker. Um, but if you look at the records of college football teams, home and away, what you will find uh, without question, and in pro, pro football teams as well, and, and just about any other sports team, um, is home and away really matters. When you're home and you're on your home turf and you have your fans and you have your, um, your environment, your, your comfort level rises and, and it's your place and the opponent, the visitor comes in and, uh, and they're less likely to win. And so churches, ch- many of our churches are the same way where, you know, we, we want, we want to bring people into our buildings. We want to do this on our turf because we're comfortable, because we can control the environment, because um, we are uh, able to put our, our hands around everything. As soon as we start moving out from our, from our home field, when we start moving out into the neighborhood and we start moving out into the community, when we start trying to have these conversations and live out beyond the four walls of, of our church building, we can't control it anymore. And that's really scary. We, we, can't, we can't control the environment. We can't control the questions. We can't control the responses. We don't know who's going to show up. We don't know who's going to say something. We don't know, we don't know any of that. And, and that's really scary. And, and it's messy. And it's hard. And so what we've come to realize is that it is a lot easier to have a church building that is our home base that, that we can leverage and invite people into. And we can make it this welcoming, wonderful place for the people uh, in our congregation. And, and if other people come along, that's fantastic. But I don't think that's the way of Jesus. Not in the big picture. Um, I think that I think the bigger picture is is as we seek to follow Jesus, as we seek to be a community that follows Jesus. It's one that follows him into the neighborhood. It, it's one that uh, it's one that congregates for missional community to be reminded to to connect with one another, but then is intentionally sent out to serve, to go. And can that be done with a big, beautiful church building? Yes, 100%. Please don't hear me say that that that, that can't be done. I think it's being done in, in tons of churches, tons of church buildings all over the world. I think it's harder. Um, I think it's harder when we, when we have, when we have this, this thing um, that, that we want to begin to center everything around. And, uh, and we begin to have to wrestle with questions of, okay, how do we pay the bills? How do we do all these things? How do we get more people in here? Because we've got, we've got this great tool. So we need to bring people in. Um, I, I think, I think for us to really live out and be a missional community, we live the up in out aspect, um, publicly in the neighborhood, we got to go, you know, what, what would happen if, uh, if we had all of our, you know, church, you know, our congregational leadership meetings in pubs or coffee shops, what if we did as many meetings as we can, uh, in public spaces? What if we, you know, what if we, we just committed ourselves to, to being active and engaged in our schools, in, local politics, in um, the, the service projects that our service organizations locally are putting together. What if we did all of that? What could happen? How, how could, how could a, a, a group of Jesus followers change a community by really being on mission all the time? One of the, one of the guys that inspired me to uh, 
to do what we're doing with the Antioch movement, to try to launch a, a, a congregation this way, to try to be a congregation that is missional community and only missional community and focused on being missional community. Uh, he told the story, he tells the story of he and his wife coming back from a mission trip from who knows where. I don't remember the details. Um, and, uh, and, he's, and they're on the plane and he says, hey, what if we lived on a mission trip all the time? Because, man, if you've been on a mission trip, they're great, right? I mean, you're out there serving, you're connecting with Christians, you're connecting with people who are outside the faith, you're making a difference, you're making some impact on a community, um, you have kind of deep, abiding worship, and, uh, and you're connecting. There's just, it's so good. And I think that's why people love these short term mission trips. But he was like, what if we, what if we did this? all the time. What if we just lived this way all the time? And so I was like, listen, we're not, no, we're not moving to South America. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, what if, what if we call some friends and we pick a place and we go live on a mission trip for the rest of our lives together? What if we go do that? And, uh, and that's what they did. And, and they, they made a huge impact in a particular city. And I just think, you know, and that struck me because I loved, you know, I loved going on mission trips. I loved doing some of those things. Um, but they were always fleeting. They were always short. Um, what you built, what you experienced on the mission trip uh, faded very quickly when you got back to quote unquote real life. And everybody went back to their jobs. And everyone went back to doing their thing. And everybody started just showing up on Sunday mornings again at the church building trying to get something out of a sermon. And you lose, you lost that depth, that, that being a missional community. You lost it so quickly. And so it's like, what if, what if we did that? You know, what if we just lived on a mission trip all the time? And we're going to live that way in Ypsilanti. And, uh, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. And it's so much fun. It's so much fun to, to realize that, you know, when we, when we show up on Friday nights and tailgate, that's, that's a whole lot of fun. And that's us being a part of our community. It's also us living out this missional community vision. Um, when we show up, when I show up and lead doubt on tap on Tuesday nights, that's a whole lot of fun. I mean, how much more fun can you get, uh, and sitting around in a pub, drinking good drinks, having deep conversation about things that matter. That's a blast. And yet, it's also me living out this vision of, of carrying on missional community. Or Monday afternoons, I hang out with my friend Laura and a group of high school athletes up at the high school, and, and we talk about God and life and purpose and meaning. It's a blast. It's so much fun. And yet, it is, it is also me living out this vision of, of, of living on a mission trip all the time of living out missional community. When I look at the people that are a part of our congregation here in Ypsilanti, and I, and I look at um, I look at all the different things that they're involved in, all the different ways that they're leading and impacting our community, they wouldn't be able to do those things, I don't think, if we were asking them to come and do a whole bunch of stuff at a church building. They'd have to make a decision. Do I serve the you know do, do I serve the church building or do I serve the community? And I don't want people to have to have to make that decision. I want them to live on mission. I want them to live live this way with a bigger picture, with a bigger vision into what they're doing. Much of what they're doing is what they were already doing when I met them. But there's this bigger picture, there's this bigger vision of how they are impacting and influencing this community that we live in. We're doing it because we love it. We're also doing it because we love, because we are, we love following Jesus to where He would go, and this is where Jesus would go. Jesus would go to our schools. He would go, he would go to football games. He would uh, go to the pubs. He'd go to the coffee shops. He'd go to our neighborhood. He would throw parties. He would have a ton of fun. That's that's what that's what being the church is about. Just just go read through the Gospels. Pick one. I don't care. And, and one of the things that you see is so much of Jesus' ministry 
is absolutely punctuated by parties, by sitting around tables, eating, drinking, talking about things that matter. And, it, and it's, it's just beautiful. And, and yet, we are so afraid to live that way for some reason. We're so afraid to do that. But that's the one we follow. He's the one we follow. We follow this Jesus. And, um, and so we're not, we're not supposed to do church. We're supposed to be the church. We're supposed to be, be this, this community of people that's living this bigger, this bigger vision, this grander vision, to live as a missional community, a community on mission. That's, that's who we are. It's not just what we do. And, and, and we don't do it. We don't do it just in a building. We don't do it just inside some bricks and mortar. But we, we are called to do it in the neighborhood, in the town, in the city, in the country, wherever it is that we find ourselves. This, this is what we are called to do. We are called, what we are called to do is a calling to be, to be a new community that is on mission, living after the ways of Jesus. So, uh, I don't know, uh, that's some thoughts on missional community, some, some thoughts on what it is that, that we're doing and why we're, why we're doing, why we're trying to be the church in a different way, um, with the Antioch movement. And, uh, and it's and it's just a snapshot of, of of how we're seeking to do it and what we're seeking to do by living as people uh, on, on on missional community as missional community. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, remember, be awesome. Don't suck. All right, podcast is recorded and done. Um, Got a couple people hanging around, it looks like. Um, you guys, questions, thoughts? Um, you guys uh, you guys been thinking about anything? Any of this ring true to you? Or um, you're kind of like, man, that's some, that's some BS. Um, what, what's popping through your minds? Anything? Well, uh... see here. Kevin Davis is on. What's up, my dude? Um, I don't really know who else is hanging around. I guess it's just you, Kevin. Um, but anyway, uh, hey, we'll take this, uh, we'll take, be taking this video. We will throw it on, uh, my YouTube channel and, uh, it'll be here on the, on the Facebook profile as well. If you want to watch back through it. And, uh, as always, would love your feedback. Would love to. Um, would love to engage with you. You can you can definitely hit me up in the comments here, uh, or hit me on Twitter uh, at twitter twitter dot com slash daniel m rose, um, and uh, and we will we'll talk. Um, so thanks again for watching, uh, Kevin. Sweet, uh, you missed everything, <laughs> but uh, watch back. Let me know what you thought, and uh, and we will. Uh, we'll continue the conversation. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll be back next Thursday for another edition of Be Awesome, Don't Suck.